Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we have a bit of a special episode for you today. A few days back, Sam Crack did a shout out in one of his episodes for us. Wow, thank you so much, Sam. Well, he's been working on his i8, trying to get the cooling system sorted, and towards the end of that episode, he does a special test to see if there's any combustive gases inside the cooling system, and that can signal some pretty serious problems. Well, at any rate, his test didn't turn out so great, but I thought what we'd do is go ahead and recreate his test today and see what we find on our car. Thought it'd be kind of fun. And then I think I want to talk to you a little bit about the car in general and our experience with it. And I think this is just going to be really fun. So all right, let's get to that test. The test that Sam performed on his car is called a block test. And it's really pretty straightforward. The idea is you've got this fluid here that will change color when it comes in contact with carbon dioxide. Dioxide. So what we do is we've got this special little vessel here. We fill our fluid up a little ways up to our fill line and then we use a bulb in here and what we're going to be doing is pulling up through this little air stone here and aerating it through our fluid and if there's any carbon dioxide it will turn the fluid from blue to yellow or blue to green if it's a diesel. This is a really interesting test and would be a great test if you're going to go out and buy a car. That would be a great test to perform on the car car as part of your pre-purchase inspection could find some really serious problems very quickly. Our first step is to remove the cap on our coolant reservoir here. All right. With that off, we'll make sure that our tester fits and seals pretty well. Kind of important. It's just going to go in here like that. The next thing we need to check is the actual fluid level. So our fluid's down quite a ways. It says in the instructions you need a couple of inches of space because the last thing you want to do is pull coolant up into this thing. You'll ruin the test and you'll have to start all over again. But it looks like we've got plenty of room here. So we're good. Looks like that's going to sit on there just fine. Well, our next step is going to be to start the car. The car has to be warm and it's very important obviously that the thermostat is open and circulating coolant through the whole car or you're just not going to get a good reading. So okay that's our next step. Let me go ahead and start the car. With the engine running, our next step is just to wait till the engine warms up a little bit. We can use an IR thermometer here to check our coolant temperature to see when we're ready. Our coolant temperature is reading 51 degrees, so that's still pretty cold. So we're going to let the engine warm up a bit. Oh, I hear some water. All right, we're getting there. Look at that, 87 degrees. We're warming up. Take a look inside our bowl there. Do you see that little stream that's happening there? That's kind of cool. I think what that is, is the auxiliary heating system for the cabin heat in the car. Really kind of neat. So there's a secondary pump that blows water through a heating element if the engine isn't quite warm enough yet. That's pretty interesting. All right, well, we're still at 59 degrees. The temperature I was getting before was actually from the auxiliary heating system. Still have a little ways to go. While we're waiting for the engine to warm up, here. I'd like to talk a little bit about our experience with this car. So ours is a 2015. We bought it a couple of years ago and it has a little less than 20,000 miles on it and it's been great. I used the car as a daily driver and it worked perfectly for that. I ran it several times in the winter. We have a set of winter tires for the car and we haven't had any issues at all with the car except for one little one. We did have the 12 volt battery was bad when we bought the car so we had that replaced. It was still under one warranty for a few months, so we had that done. Oh, and we had the, the home link garage door opener thing didn't work, which has really nothing to do with the car. So we had that swapped out as well. But that's it. That's the only issues we've had with the car. I've done the maintenance on it. I've changed the oil on it, and I'm going to have to flush the brakes, and I need to do another oil change on the car. But this car is super easy to work on. It really is. You can totally do the oil change and the brake stuff yourself. I've gotten several interesting responses and comments on some of the videos, people saying that, oh my gosh, it's, it's going to cost you $8,000 a year in service, or it's going to cost you so much in service, it'll be more than what you paid for the car. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just not feeling any of that. It just seems to be a very nice, reliable, fun, interesting car to drive, at least so far for us. Pat's Garage Online has done some videos on one issue that has come up on the cars with the cooling for 
for the battery actually, the high voltage battery, which runs through the AC system. And that AC compressor, which is a scroll type compressor, uh, tends to go bad, I suppose, but I'm not sure what the percentage of that is. You know, how many cars have actually got that issue? When you're online, all you hear usually is just the problems. But our car has been great. The problem Sam's having with his car, the cooling system on it, would be the high temperature cooling system. And that's really just kind of the engine cooling. He's got a problem back in the engine. Something's going on back there. And he did this test that we're about to perform and found some pretty bad results. But that's super unusual, actually. I mean, that's why I think the car had bounced around from person to person to person, dealer to dealer or whatever, because it's a very, very unusual problem. So I don't think these cars are prone to any big common problems. I don't think they're really a huge mess. They're not any more complicated than any other hybrid vehicle out there. Hybrid vehicles have an engine and an electric motor, and in many instances, the accessories have been disassociated from the engine. They're no longer belt driven. So they're run by electric motors and sensors and things. And that can add a little bit of complexity to the system, certainly, of course. But it adds a lot of features. You can precondition the car before you get into it so the temperature is just right. You can have it hold when you're out shopping or whatever. If it's freezing cold out, you come back, the car's nice and warm. Or if it's really hot, it will run the air conditioning for you while you're inside. Those kind of features are really kind of neat. But yes, they do add a bit of complexity to the system. All right, we finally got some temperature in the reservoir. I think we're good. Well, it looks like we've got some heat in the engine finally. Let's go ahead and perform our test. We're gonna fill up our reactor here up to this yellow line at the bottom with our blue fluid. We just need to pop the top off of this. Here we go, and we just pour in a bit of this fluid. All right, great, we're set here. Just put our rubber stopper on the top back on. And our bulb here has a one-way valve at the top, so we just stick this in like that. Pretty simple. We just place this over the top. We get a good seal. All right, we're gonna draw air in and bubble air through our reactant here and look for a color change. And this takes about a minute or so, or a little longer. And I'm seeing nothing, look at that. It's still the bright blue it was when we started. Look at that, no, no color change whatsoever. All right, I think that's good. And after all that fuss, look at this, we're still blue here. So we've had no color change at all, which tells us that we have no carbon dioxide in the cooling system, which is a very good sign. All right, let me shut the car off and we'll button up our reservoir. On our cap here for the reservoir, there's a rubber gasket, an O-ring that goes all the way around here. I'm just gonna throw just the lightest little bit of silicone paste on there to help it seal better and help it go on easier. And we're talking just a kiss here, just the teeniest little bit. All right, just like that. Take this opportunity to sort of clean underneath here a little bit. Okay, replace our cap. There it goes, snaps, and you wanna make sure that the arrows are lined up. Looks like we're good here. Well, that really wasn't much of a surprise. I just did it because I thought it would be fun. I've never performed one of those tests before, so I thought it would be kind of interesting to see how it goes. And of course, we didn't find any CO2 in our cooling system at all, so yay. So Sam did, so he's obviously got an issue with the engine, and the only way that can happen is that the combustion of the engine is forcing its way into the cooling system. So probably a bad head gasket, there's other possibilities, poricity issues. It's very rare, but it's possible that the casting has a crack or a hole in it, and it could be pushing gas through that way. Um, the only other thing I can think of would be possibly the turbo. It's also on the 
cooling circuit back there as well. And it's kind of interesting how it works back there. When the engine is running, the auxiliary pump isn't running. It doesn't need to because coolant's being pushed from the cooling system and the water pump on the engine through the turbo to cool it. So everything's great. But then once you turn the engine off, it wants to continue cooling those bearings in the turbo a bit. It doesn't want them to overheat. So there's an auxiliary pump that cranks on then and runs some of the cooling fluid through there and continues to cool the turbo a little bit after the engine is off. That's kind of cool. But it does show that the, you've got the turbo there and you've got cooling and I guess it's possible there could be an issue. I don't know, it's pretty unlikely. But I think Sam's gonna get it. I think he's on top of it. He's going to, he's gonna get this done. He's gonna get a very special car out of this. I love our i8, I really do. I think it's one of the coolest cars. The, I think the price is right. I think it's just such an interesting and fun car to drive. We just have a great time with it. So what about big major issues with the i8? Well, there have been a few, definitely have been, and some of them have been a little bit expensive, but I'm not seeing anything across all the i8s that's just systemically wrong with the car. Like it's just too complicated, it's going to break. I just, I don't see that in the cars at all. They seem to be working pretty well. A lot of people are putting some serious mileage on these cars as well. So I don't know. If something crazy went wrong with it, I would probably talk to the dealer about it and see what they would recommend. But you know, I mean, this car's not all that difficult to work on either. Certainly easy to do maintenance on. And I've got the shop manuals for this car as well. So I went to e-manuals online and downloaded the shop manual for this car. So I've got what the dealer has actually. It's pretty sweet. And when I was talking to Sam about his car, I had that manual up and I was going through everything. To be honest, I didn't know that much about the cooling system on the car and now I do. It's been really really fun to work with Sam on his car. He's so motivated to get it done and Sam is just the nicest guy ever. He really is. It's been a lot of fun. Really exciting. We were bouncing stuff back and forth but uh, I think he's got it. I think he's on top of it and he's gonna get it. It's gonna be awesome and he's really gonna enjoy his i8. I hope you enjoyed this little video of my thoughts on the i8 and our little procedure here to to just duplicate what Sam did. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you've got questions or comments, go of course leave them down below and we'll get right to them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. Hit the little bell next to it to be notified. We work on all sorts of stuff. We work in our garage. We have four Porsches a Ferrari and this BMW. So it's really a fun garage and we're currently in the middle of working on a 3.2 Carrera. So it's just been great. That project's been awesome. We're gonna be moving from that to our Ferrari 308. So if you like that kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. It's gonna be awesome. All right, well, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.